Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. Hi, this is Andy Hull with Space News. I'm presenting part nine of my series, Eye of the Storm, where we look at electrical scarring on the Colorado Plateau. The Caribbean seafloor displays deep trenches aligned with island arcs which run parallel to each other, even around bends. Volcanic island chains and oceanic trenches are magnetic expressions of a subsurface current. Volcanic islands appear to one side of the current and deep trenches appear on the other. The subsurface current does not produce trench and volcano chains directly. They are formed by eddy currents in the solenoid-like coaxial magnetic field surrounding the current. Think of a subsurface Birkeman current with the added effect of iron in the ground magnifying the magnetic field and its eddy currents. The effect is described by Lin's law which is a special case of Faraday's law of induction. To induce eddy currents according to Lin's law, the conductor itself had to be in motion in across Earth's magnetic field, generating helical eddy currents in the coaxial magnetic field around the moving conductor. Eddy currents generate heat due to resistance in the material where the currents form. Eddy currents form around the moving conductor, melting the surrounding rock and creating magma chambers. Lorentz force, or the drag effect of a moving conductor through a magnetic field, which is a magnetic reaction in the opposing direction, pushes volcanoes up on one side and depresses the crust into the molten chamber on the other, creating a trench at the trailing edge of the moving conductor. There is no actual conductor like a copper wire, but it's the movement of a filament of current, which is moving in reaction to electromagnetic forces that burns and melts its way through the crust. Given that islands are to the inside of the trench, the right-hand rule indicates the Caribbean loop current ran counterclockwise during formation of the Caribbean plate. The movement of the current also dredged seafloor, piling it into non-volcanic islands along its path, aided by incomprehensible tsunamis. The violence of this event cannot be overstated. Similar current loops can be found at the Horn of South America and the Indonesian Archipelago. Evidence the current moved is also displayed in the sinuous curves of the trenched island chains. Note the image where the filament drags south. Its momentum amplified the eddy currents heating the crust to build the Cuban island chain along an S-shaped curve before locking its position in a straight line at Jamaica. One of the likely reasons current loops make these lateral moves is because the sides of the loop flow in opposite directions and the magnetic polarity of the coaxial eddy currents are opposite and attract, narrowing the loop like a hangman's noose. The magnetic field attraction eventually meets electric field repulsion from the opposing current vectors, which snaps the current into balance in parallel lines. The tip of the loop accumulates the highest charge density, so even though it's the region that moves the least, its high potential burns neat little arcs of volcanoes. The sinuous pattern shows how charge density spread in longitudinal ways through the moving filament as it met resistance. It's similar to how tension and compression travels in waves through a sealed spring. It forms a sine curve with the greatest amount of volcanism trenching and dredging at the inflections where momentum change greatest, amplifying the magnetic induction of eddy currents. The deepest trenches show where the current came to rest and momentum suddenly decelerated to zero as an electromagnetic balance was achieved across the loop structure. Lateral current movements of this type can be found all over the world. The momentum change in the current produces distinctive arcs of deep depressions and volcanic island chains in the oceans. On land, telltale lakes, mountain chains, rivers, volcanoes, and mar craters align themselves in the same patterns. Where the Caribbean loop joins the ring of fire, the juncture is called a triple junction. Triple junctions occur at the plate boundaries. For instance, the Rivera Triple Junction is where the Rivera Plate meets the Eastern Pacific Rise. 
Triple junctions are known hotspots for volcanic and seismic activity and magnetic anomaly. Since there are triple junctions along the North American plate, it begs the question, are there current loops connected to these junctions beneath the continental plate? Let's examine North America. The ring of fire is the obvious path of a subsurface current because it forms a lineament of volcanoes from Alaska to Central America. There are three other major lineaments in North America's interior. Yellowstone supervolcano is one end of a curving lineament of volcanoes in a trend that forms a part of the Snake River Valley across southern Idaho. To the south is a string of volcanic fields called the Jemez lineament. The Jemez lineament extends diagonally from the Pinacate volcanic field in Sonora, Mexico, northeast across Arizona to the border between Colorado and New Mexico. It's bisected by a northwest to southwest lineament of volcanoes that include the San Francisco peaks and the Yuen Caret volcanoes on the north rim of Grand Canyon. With all of these plotted together on one map, a pattern begins to emerge that implies there's a current loop beneath North America. Plotted, the Jemez and San Francisco peak volcanic lineaments produce an almost perpendicular cross pattern juxtaposed symmetrically across the Colorado Plateau from the volcanoes of the Yellowstone Complex and aligned with the Ring of Fire. The Jemez lineament aims directly to the Guadalupe microplate to the southwest and to the Arc of the Great Lakes to the northeast. The loop appears to circle the Great Lakes and points back to the Black Hills in South Dakota which appears to be an inflection point. From there it points to the Juan de Fuca plate in a direct line through Yellowstone. It has a similar shape and size to the Caribbean current loop, with the base of the loop wider than the tip. Similar to the Caribbean loop, there is a significant depression at the tip. In this case, it's the Great Lakes, but they reside on the inside of the loop, whereas ocean trenches are outside of the Caribbean loop. And where the Caribbean loop has volcanic islands inside the curve of the loop, the North American loop has mar craters, which is a type of volcanic action forming a series of circular lakes outside the arc of the Great Lakes. Mars are volcanoes created by steam and other gases exploding instead of spewing ash and lava. Smaller such expressions are known as karsts and breccia pipes. They are all forms of diatremes and are often mined for uranium and precious metals, which the eruption leaves behind in the throat of the tube. The surface result is a crater instead of a cinder cone and is typically filled with water. The implication is that the loop current lies below aquifers that erupted in steam creating the Mars and that the volcanic expression is to the outside of the loop, depressions to the inside, so current circulates north to south in this loop opposite to the Caribbean loop. The shape of the Great Lakes, especially Lake Superior, shows the sinuous shape of ground current movement. It appears the loop narrowed or swung to the south until the southern leg aligned to the Jemez lineament. The Yellowstone volcano lineament is a half circle and also appears to be from ground current movement. In this case, the movement appears to be north from the Monterey microplate to the Juan de Fuca triple junction. If so, this widened the base of the loop with the pivot point of the shift at the Black Hills of South Dakota. Now, if I'm not telling you anything new here, try this. The electrical structure of these small loop currents and the junctions with large polar loops like the ring of fire forms a circuit called an operational amplifier, commonly called an op amp. An op amp is a type of current loop, but there is one key ingredient to an op amp that makes it special and that's a direct current or DC connection to the loop, which amplifies the gain of output to input current by as much as 100,000. It can then be manipulated with additional circuitry, resistance, inductance, and capacitance in various configurations to perform all kinds of tricks. They can be made to oscillate, amplify, or invert. Op amps are at the heart of circuitry, such as the old Hewlett-Packard calculator I used in college to perform complex math.
op amps did the adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing of my inputs to give me outputs. I needed to get a grade. So how does nature insert this DC current into the loop? With lightning. Lightning strikes DC pulses into the ground. And in the environment we're exploring, lightning struck continuously, long enough and powerful enough to draw supersonic winds and matter to build mountains, like the Black Hills of South Dakota which is an inflection point in this loop. From that inflection point, the Yellowstone volcano aligns with lightning-generated mountains of Sacagawea Peak and the Black Hills along this subsurface current path. If the op amp needs a shot of DC current, nature organizes itself to provide by stirring a storm that spits lightning in the appropriate place, thereby fulfilling its fractal pattern requirements. It's Esther's hands. I won't go into detail about how op amps work. There's plenty of books about them, but one attribute certain op amps have I want to point out. Properly configured, the bridge between triple junctions experiences a low, almost zero current relative to the current outside the junctions and in the loop. This corresponds to the bridge region of the ring of fire between the Mendocino triple junction and the Guadalupe microplate where there is but a few sparsely spread volcanoes. Compared to the Cascades and Olympics, or the profusion of large volcanoes in Mexico, only Mount Shasta, Lassen, Mammoth, and a few anemic lava flows fill out this bridge section. The relatively low density and magnitude of volcanoes is evidence that current was restricted along this bridge, just like in an op amp. But the bigger take on all this is that the Earth is a damn computer. There is no other conclusion to draw when there are op amps all over the circuit clicking and switching currents around. The Earth works as a coherent circuit. It's a circuit within a bigger circuit centered on the Sun. And it has circuits within it shaping the continents in weather. There is no butterfly effect. A butterfly does not stir 300 mile per hour tornadoes. It's one of the fallacies of modern science that leads to accepting abstract and frivolous ideas. There are fluctuations in signal strength Earth receives from the solar system. Earth is a ball of energy and matter, and when it gets extra energy, it stores some in the matter. As Earth's balance with the solar system oscillates, as it must, Skin effects take place as Earth's matter absorbs and releases energy. Those skin effects are geology and weather, and they are driven by capacitance as energy flows between Earth's layers of matter. Ionization and induced currents are the natural result. We've been looking at the physical evidence. There is nothing described in these chapters that is implausible or unscientific. In fact, it's what's expected to see on a planet. It's what physics predicts if the inquiry begins with the proper framework. The next chapter will be the final one for the Eye of the Storm project. We'll summarize then and draw some final conclusions. Thank you 